involves some new physics, that is the signal. And we have discussed that it has three important components. The size of the signal, that is the number of signal events, which I call Ms, it depends on three quantities. And so far we have discussed three quantities on which this depends. One is the signal, uh, number of signal events. One is the production cross-section, like if we are looking for Higgs boson, then the production cross-section is the Higgs production cross-section. But then most of the time the particle that is being produced is highly unstable. So we cannot detect them directly, no way. Therefore, we have to find techniques for detecting their decay products, which are stable particles. And that probability is ratio into the final state. So S means whatever be my new particle, it decays into some final state. It may be two leptons, four leptons, or as in the Higgs case, two photons, whatever you like. So branching ratio. And then we introduced something which called efficiency. Now this concept of efficiency comes simply because of the fact that no matter which signal you take, from new physics, there will always be some similar things from old <coughs> physics, which you can call the background of the noise to the signal. And therefore, you have to put in some kinematical selections, like invariant mass or uh, a cut on the momentum, transverse momentum, whatever you like. There could be 1, there could be 5, there could be 10, anything. So that is the efficiency of the signal. And the noise of the background also has the three things. Well, the luminosity, the formal definition 
definition is the following. But roughly speaking, physically, it simply means how many collisions are taking place. Because luminosity is going to give you the total number of events. So it depends on how many collisions are taking place. This is the rough understanding. But here is the formal definition. And the formal definition is the following. Now remember in colliding beam, two beams, in the case of LHC, <coughs> two proton beams are colliding head on. Time interval is called in 
very much. The observability depends on integrated luminosity. And I will discuss it right now. But before that, I have to tell you another thing which uh, actually Professor Shundi Bahar asked in the morning. That is, signal is more than the background. Now, that's a qualitative statement. How big? Now, the question can be naively answered in the following way. Now, those of you who know about Poisson statistics, which is the statistics for radioactivity, because in a radioactivity experiment, suppose you are counting the number of radioactive decays, and you do it for a fixed time interval, you do it five times, you will find that you don't get the same number. Identical experiment done five times over the same time interval and you won't get the same number. This is what we call statistical fluctuation. It is also true that if we do the experiment for such time interval as the count rate is high, then the difference becomes smaller. Give you an example. Suppose you have a source, radioactive source, which decays. Let us say, you know, just arbitrary. Let us say 100 times. Then you do the experiment for another identical time interval. It could be 110. You do it next time. It will be could be 80. So this is what we call statistical fluctuation. That is, we do not get the same number. Now, in LHC you are doing experiment one time. Right? You cannot really repeat it, the same experiment. So therefore, you have to see that your background does not fluctuate to give Suppose we are focusing on this two gamma effect from Higgs DK. Now we have found that experimentally probably the background is something, some number, let us say 20. And then actually we observe 24. Now can you say that we have seen the signal? No, because the background itself is a fluctuating number and it could be just due to statistical fluctuation giving you a count of 24. I repeat, suppose we have observed 24 events, whereas we have calculated the background, <coughs> experimentally or simulation does not matter, to be 20. Now can we immediately say that we have seen the signal? <coughs> no, because the background itself is a fluctuating quantity and just because of statistical fluctuation it can give you a count of 24. Now this is a big business when the experimentalists do. It has a complicated program for calculating the statistical significance of the same thing. In particular if the background and signal are both small then it is very tricky thing, but as in all other cases, we will simplify. So we will define a significance of the signal as, well since I am using the symbol X, S for the signal. Five. 
means the size of the signal is at least five times more than the fluctuation. Then we say that we have seen a statistically significant signal. Now, what happens if I take this to be three or two? Well, it simply means that we will be going to the danger region. Two means that the background can fluctuate to twice the observed value is, 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 is quite big. The probability is quite big. Now those of you who are not in the particle physics community may not be aware of it, but those of you who are at least keep track of particle physics events at the, let us say, internet level, then you will find that quite often there are claims that we have seen a 2.5 sigma excess. Now what does that mean? Roughly speaking, most probably this number 2.5 has been reached by a much more sophisticated statistical analysis. But roughly speaking it is S over square root of B is something like 2.5. Now that means that the signal is 2.5 fluctuations above the now that is not reliable because the background can easily fluctuate to that value and what you see as a signal, what you are interpreting as a signal is nothing but a statistical fluctuation. But if we accept <coughs> this definition, then we immediately see the importance of the luminosity. 